Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> King of kings, Lord of lords, we serve the most high God. We serve the alpha. We serve the omega. We serve the beginning. We serve the ending. We serve <laughs> the one who is. We serve the one who was. We serve the one who is to come. Hallelujah, for he is worthy. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of all the honor. He is worthy of all of the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. And yes to his promises. They are steadfast. His promises are forever. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice. We will be glad in it. And when that joy of the Lord hits, it hits deep down on the inside, down, way down to the core of our being. And it hits in places that counseling can't touch upon. And it's good to go to counselors and it's good to get treatment and it's good to get help. It hits in places that the doctors cannot quite remedy because the only true remedy for our sickness, the only true remedy, the only true healing for our sickness, for our illness, for our disease, because we are in this earthen vessel. It's Jesus Christ. He is our healing. He was wounded for our transgressions, our breaking of God's laws. He was bruised for our iniquities, the cycles that we continuously keep going and going and going in our sinful nature, rebelling against God. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes, by his stripes, we are healed. We are healed currently from a past tense finished work. It's either finished or it's not. But according to the word of God, the work is finished. We are working now from a place of rest. We are laboring from a place of rest. There's a rest, there's a refreshing, there's a renewing, living on the inside of you. There's a rest, there's a refreshing, there's a renewing, living on the inside of me. And our wells run deep. And our wells run deep. They are to be filled with water. The river of living water which shall flow out of our belly. We are so filled with the Holy Spirit's strength, with the Holy Spirit's refreshment, with the Holy Spirit's power, with the Holy Spirit's fire, that it is contagious. He is an all-consuming fire, that it's a fire shut up in our bones, that it cannot be contained. We cannot be confined in this hour, but we must proceed. We must go forth. We must go forward. We must put our hand to the plow. Wow. And in the natural, it wouldn't make any sense. It wouldn't make any sense to put our hands to the plow and look behind us. But in the spirit, that's exactly what a lot of people are doing. What's done is done away with, and we nail it. It's been nailed to the cross of Jesus Christ. We are new creations, and we proceed, and we go forward towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> he has good plans for you. He has good plans for me. He has plans to prosper us, to give us a hope, to give us a future, even as our soul prospers. Soulically, we are prospering on the inside of us. We are growing. We are maturing. We are developing. We are strengthening. We are strengthening. And that strength is a spiritual strength. It's coming from a spiritual place. And if we are not filled with empowerment from the Holy Spirit, then we might as well just throw in the towel right now. <laughs> in other words, if we're not looking for strength from God, there's no hope other than Jesus Christ. 
And no, we should never throw in the towel. There's always hope for the hopeless, but the answer is Jesus Christ. And it's gonna come to a point where he separates the sheeps from the goats. And a lot of us are on the fence right now. A lot of us are in the middle right now, but there is no middle. We wanna create a middle. We wanna create a gray line. We wanna create a middle ground, but there's no middle ground in this thing. We're either sheeps or we're goats. We're either believers or we are unbelievers. He's either faithful or he's not. The word of God is either true or it's not true. We're either light or we are darkness. But what harmony has light with darkness? It's like not going together. And we have believers coming together with unbelievers and, and universalism and new age. Um, there's a lot of deception in the body of Christ. There's a lot of strong delusion and deception in the world in which we live. And without the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God to loose us from the shackles of deception, to loose us from the shackles of the pains of yesterday, to loose us from the shackles of fear, to loose us from the shackles of strong delusion, then we are not going to know what the truth is. It's the truth that sets us free, that we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. And so the Holy Spirit leads us, the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. And so he's come to set the captives free and see this broad way that many are going. It may look good and may seem wonderful on the outside, but it's that broad way that leads to destruction, the way that many choose to follow. That way leads to destruction. But the narrow way, it's that narrow path, that narrow way that leads unto life everlasting. And that life everlasting is living and abiding and dwelling on the inside of us the more and more we read God's Word and get a hold of God's Word. It lives and abides forever. His Word endures and lives forever, living on the inside of us, refreshing us strengthening us in ways that we don't even understand and we're not even aware of as we're reading it. We're not even aware of some of the things that are taking place as we're reading God's Word, but there is healing, there is deliverance in the truth of Jesus Christ. And on that last day, many shall be separated, sheeps from the goats, and according to God's word, there is no other way to heaven. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. And a lot of people are compromising in this hour. A lot of people are compromising because they don't want to be persecuted. A lot of people are compromising because they don't want to be mocked. A lot of people are compromising over the almighty dollar rather than serving the almighty father. A lot of compromise has taken place, and because of that, the state and condition of the body of Christ um, has become corrupted. Not everywhere, and not in every place, but in some places. This is happening, and without the Holy Spirit's strength in this hour, we're not going to be able to stand in this evil day saying, yes, Lord, I have done all to stand. I have fought the good fight of faith. I have ran the course. I have run the race. And many people shall do many great things, even miracles, even signs, even healings, even wonders. And on that day, there are some that are going to hear out of the Lord himself's mouth, his mouth, out of the Lord's mouth, his mouth alone. Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But Lord, didn't we do many miracles in your name? Didn't we cast out demons and devils in your name? Depart from me, I never knew you. And this whole thing goes back to relationship. He's a relational God. And so our relationship with Jesus Christ is everything. It's the core foundation of 
all things of all things all things that we see all things were created by him all things were created for him our whole life is to give praise to give honor to give glory to the Lord Jesus Christ and let our life be an offering and our prayers be a sweet smelling savor unto the Lord yes I hear you all is well all is well Eric God is good all is well welcome Crystal welcome Eric welcome Lisa welcome George welcome Courtney welcome Allie welcome Ronnie welcome Roseanne welcome Debar welcome Randy welcome Bobby Bennett thanks for always joining welcome Esteban Michael Brady Jose and Mano and all others who shall join and so we're just hanging out in the presence of God it's too good to contain and to attempt to confine God's presence within the four walls so it's about love it's about unity in the community <laughs> Pure religion undefiled before the Father is to comfort the widows and the orphans and those that are struggling in their time of affliction, in their time of need. Of course, using wisdom, of course, using discernment. But the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit to minister to other people. We need the Holy Spirit to discern display the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit the fruit of the Spirit the love of God the love of God and so we are in an evil day and many things are happening around us so fast that it's hard to even comprehend because it's like a scroll it's just unrolling it's unraveling and everything's happening fast because the end of all things is near He's knocking at the door. The seasons are changing. The seasons are changing. Just like winter, fall, summer, spring. We know the next season is approaching by the changing of the color of the leaves, by the changing of the temperature. We can know that there's a change coming in the natural realm by looking at the seasons and the weather around us and we can feel that summer is approaching by that change that shift in the atmosphere well there is an atmospheric shift in the realm of the spirit because on earth as it is in heaven on earth as it is in heaven there is an atmospheric shift transformation taking place right here right now and if we are in tune with the Holy Spirit God will lead us to the truth and the truth shall set us free and he will show off in your life and he wants to show off in your life that the name of Christ Jesus always be glorified forever and ever and so he will he is able to do exceedingly above all we can think all we can ask so we just abide in his presence we just remain in his presence is fullness of joy in his presence are pleasures forevermore one day is as a thousand years with the Lord or a thousand years is one day and so it's just incomprehensible the spiritual things are hard to grasp but when connected with the natural to bring everything back to perspective there is an understanding because it's hard for us to grasp things of the spirit unless we live and abide in the spirit and we shall worship him in spirit and in truth and that's why the Holy Spirit comes upon us to give us power that those shackles are loosed that have been on your ankles your entire life I've come to declare in agreement and accordance with God's holy word 
that the shackles of addiction be broken now. That the shackles of fear be broken. The shackles of depression be broken. The shackles of lunatic be broken. The shackles of a deaf and dumb spirit be broken. The shackles of a confused spirit be broken. The shackles of witchcraft be broken. The shackles of the pain of yesterday be broken. Every soul wound be healed by the love of God, by the power of the cross of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah, Lord. Father God, I pray that you would open hearts right now, that you would open minds right now, that you would open ears right now, that you would open eyes right now, that the goodness of God and a godly sorrow would fall heavily upon us and lead us to repentance. Strengthen us on the inside, Lord. Strengthen us to run this race. And we run it not in ourselves, but with the endurance given from heaven. Thank you, Lord, that you gave your only son, Jesus, that whosoever should believe on you shall be saved. That all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In Jesus' name, Lord, let the seed fall on good ground and let us come into the harmony of the unity of the measure of the stature of Christ Jesus and just touch our hearts in a new way. Comfort us in a new way and strengthen our relationship with you right here and right now. Let there be an openness and a willingness Draw our friends and families closer together through the love of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We plead the blood of Jesus over our doorposts, over all of our assets, over our belongings, over our cars, over our houses, over our bicycles. Ministering guardian angels be dispatched right now in the heavenly dimensions in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, draw those who are sick, who are ill, to this channel in Jesus' name for healing. Draw those who are bruised, who are wounded, to this channel for healing. And into your love in general. Not this channel alone, but into the body of Christ to receive all that you have for them. Draw them to a stronger relationship with you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Draw the oppressed, Lord. In fact, we break the heavy yokes. We call forth the anointing of God that breaks every yoke of bondage right now in Jesus' name. The yoke of oppression be broken by the power of the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, demons, devils trembling right now. Father, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine be the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen, and amen, let it be so. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, he's worthy. Yes, we thank you, Lord. <laughs> he is so good. <laughs> so we're just hanging out with Jesus. It's agendaless other than being about our father's business. And what's wrong with having any joy? What's wrong with having the joy of the Lord? What's wrong with being excited about Jesus Christ? What's wrong with mentioning the name above every name? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. But you will find 
when you serve this one true living God, when you speak the name of Jesus Christ, some things begin getting rumbled up. Some things begin uh, brewing and stirring in the realm of the spirit, but he's already given us the victory. Thanks be to God who has given us the victory. The battle has been won. So we just come into agreement right now with what's already been previously finished at the cross. And in knowing that, we are set free from shame. We are set free from guilt. We are set free from condemnation for whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Yes, many are called, few are chosen. Not everybody will take responsibility for the call, but some will say, yes, Lord, you've called me. I will go forth. Reveal to me your ways. I want to abide in your presence all of my days. And he just will take that person, break those chains, break those shackles, break those bondages, take those weights off their back, like spiritual backpacks that have been on them all of their life, weighing them down, release them to their destiny, set them free on their pathway to destiny, and many, many, many get set free. So he leaves the 99 for the one, for the one that went astray. You could be that one. I was that one. His love is just so beyond comprehension in our humanity. And that's why when we feel the love of God sometimes, that's why I think we get brought to tears because it's so beyond our humanistic capability of receiving. But when we attempt to receive as best we can or know how by just being still, we are overwhelmed with his presence. We are overwhelmed with the love of God. And that sets us free. That breaks the shackles. That breaks the chains. That breaks the anxiety. That breaks the stress. That breaks the fear. That breaks the depression. That breaks the shame, guilt, condemnation. And the list goes on and on. And we are new creations. We are made completely new. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. And so I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful this day. I'm grateful for the breath in my lungs. I'm grateful for all that I have. But really, riches, it's not materialistic. It's living on the inside of us. The greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. And nothing can compare to eternal salvation, the saving of one's soul. It's worth more than every dollar that exists on this planet. And when we tap in and tune in and get in touch with the rhythm of the Holy Spirit and just God's heartbeat for souls, we get excited. We get so excited because this is the Great Commission. It's the Great Commission. The Great Commission to go out. The Great Commission to make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, which is the name above every name in which every single knee shall bow. Every single tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. And this is what it's all about. Everything else, count it all as loss but this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached and then the end shall come so the end shall come after this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the four corners of the earth because everybody's gonna get a chance to accept or reject Jesus Christ the way the truth and the life everlasting. No man comes to the Father but by Him. Amen. Pastor Bobby, thank you for joining us.
We're really going to promote this amazing event. We're going to get into it, talk about it. It's great. I think everybody should know about it. I think it's important to have love. I think it's important to have unity in the body of Christ and, and in the, the community as well. And just that division, four wall division um, crum is crumbling down. And it's part of, of the movement that's happening in the days that we're living. It has to happen. It has to happen. We're going back to the early days just like in the early days, back to basics. And so this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the four corners of the earth. And then, only then, the end shall come because every single person will have the chance to accept or reject the message of the cross of Christ Jesus. And the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. See, but those who are wise and receive it, it is the power of God. It's the power of God unto salvation to deliverance, to freedom for those who simply believe. <laughs> it's foolish to people that are not going to make it into everlasting life. It seems foolish to them because it's a, sim a simple message. It's a, such a simple message. And, uh, and some people think in their own mentality that they're so wise that they've actually been blinded. Satan is blinding the minds of many people. But for those who are awake in this hour to receive, for those who have come out of slumber and have awakened to the light of Christ and to the truth of the love of God, can see the blinders have been removed. The veil has been torn. We can come boldly before the throne room of grace in our time of need. I don't know what other time there is more need than now. If we look around at all these things going on around us, it's just madness. But there's a peace living on the inside of you, living on the inside of me. There's a joy living on the inside of you. There's a joy living on the inside of me in knowing our salvation, secure in faith in the one and only Son of God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever shall believe in him. Does it say whosoever shall believe in Buddha? Whosoever shall believe in Allah? Whosoever shall believe in this book? Whosoever shall believe in that book? That's not what it says. But whosoever shall believe in him, being in Jesus Christ, Son of God, shall not perish, shall not be condemned, but shall have everlasting life. And so the grace of God has appeared unto all men to offer the gift of salvation to those who believe. If we simply believe, the door has been opened unto us this night. And there is just a platter put before us full of the grace of God and the love of God. It's, it's just being dished out on a silver platter. God's paid it all by giving his son. And so the war really is in our minds of believing God loves us, believing what was done for us, believing that's where the battle, the battle is in our mind. <laughs> the battle is in the mind. That's where the battle starts. It's in the mind because of believing, because there's power in what we believe in. Whatever we choose to believe or to not believe in, there's power in that choice. And right now there's multitudes in the valley of decision. You've got a decision to make of some sort right now. Every single person. It could be the simplest thing. It could be the most minute decision. It could be a huge decision. 
game changer, a life changing decision, but every single person has some type of decision to make tonight, whatever it may be. But the ultimate decision one can make in their life is to choose this day whom ye shall serve. The gods on the other side of the river? No. As for me and my household, my generations to come, my family, we will serve the Lord. It's a choice. It's a decision and it comes from right believing. When we believe right, we will live right. Holiness from the inside out, not from the outside in. Not trying to force feed somebody a Bible and hit them over the head with it. Not telling somebody that their whole life is banged up and everything they're doing is wrong so they might as well just give up because they're never gonna make it anyway and that they're a castaway. But this is what's going on in some of the body of Christ. And it's a shame. That's a shame right there. Because there is hope. As long as there is breath in our lungs, there is hope. There are people who don't have grace to be breathing right now. Who, if they were given the opportunity could repent and could come to Christ and could experience the love of God. But many have passed on and have missed the opportunity that you have right now. Many have passed on and have missed it, have completely missed the mark. But we don't have to. We don't have to miss it. He's offering a free gift, the gift of salvation. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. We can either receive it and believe it or reject it and cast it aside. We can either go on to become sheeps or goats, but God has the final say. There's good news and that's why it's called the gospel. Gospel means good news. So the greatest news I've ever heard is that I can be forgiven for my sins. The greatest news I ever heard was that heaven went bankrupt for me. Heaven went bankrupt for you. It's gospel. It's good news. So whoever's going around banging the Bible over other people's heads and telling them they're completely banged up and have no shot, I'm sorry, but you know what? I'm actually not sorry. I'm not in agreement. But I am in agreement with sharing the love of God, telling the truth and not compromising and letting the Holy Spirit and the love of God move upon the hearts of the people and praying for the Holy Spirit to move upon hearts of people I will encounter in the future before I even meet them. Let God be true and every man a liar. Let us be still and know that he is God. And we just do our part. We watch him move. We watch him move. <laughs> Jesus, you are worthy. <laughs> he is so good. He is so good. I don't know why anybody wouldn't want to partake in this in the free gift. Yes, Lord. So, we're just hanging out with Jesus. We're just having a Holy Spirit party right here. <laughs> Agenda of the Holy Spirit. Let it be. Whatever it is. You know, we don't have to have a printed message. We don't have to have a whole booklet on our lap to preach the love of Christ and the gospel, the good news. Some people are doing that, Eric. Some people are doing that. I've seen it. I've seen it. Some people. But when we just let the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit move and we speak the truth in love from a place of love, God moves so powerfully on our behalf. He goes before us. 
and what he can do is way above, exceedingly above all we can think. It's exceedingly above all we could think or even ask for. God will do it. He's a faithful God. He is a good God. He's come to strengthen us. He has come to set us free. He has come to encourage us. Let the weak say, I am strong. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen, amen. Welcome, Carrie, my amazing sister. Your tacos. She, my sister would like to know where her tacos are. I will show you. <laughs> See, this is what happens, guys, right? I saw on my way to get some food for, for the family. <laughs> right here. And Jesus says, do a video. So the ability to yield our agenda, the ability to surrender our plan in that given moment to the plan and working and move of the Holy Spirit is when he works the best. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes. So we just move out of the way and we let God be who he is. He's seated on the throne far above all principalities and he's got it. We're made by him, we're made for him, and a lot of us are trying to just get in the way and go before God, but God goes before us. He's already paved the way, prepared the way. We're just walking in the pathway that's already been paved. <laughs> his yoke is easy, his burden is light. And so I just pray that everybody get, not get, but already is blessed and encouraged that all under the sound of my voice receive strength, receive encouragement in the name of Jesus. Have an understanding of the authority in Christ Jesus that we were chosen for such a time as this and we arise to the call. We say yes, Lord. We say amen. His mercy endures forever. Jesus. We love you, Lord. <laughs> Sometimes we don't even have to talk. We don't even have to speak. Be slow to speak, quick to listen. And we just hear in the heavenlies the sound of heaven. Heaven's declaration over our lives. There's a rhythm of the harmony, of the melody, of heaven's declaration. And it's love. It's an ongoing theme. It's the core. It's the relationship. It's love. And it's unity. And so, that's what it's about. That's what it's about in the end. It's love and unity without compromising. The name of Jesus because the name of Jesus brings unity the name of Jesus brings love the name of Jesus brings many other things also that we're gonna get into in another video and that's why we need the power of the Holy Spirit to walk the walk to walk this walk it's a faith walk and what is faith it's the evidence of things unseen substance of things hoped for it's a faith walk we're believing in the unseen in the invisible realm things are manifesting back to the present reality and what we're seeing around us is occurring in the invisible realm in the spiritual realm on earth as it is in heaven and we have been given the keys to the kingdom we have authority there is authority when you pray in Jesus name even so much that the demons that the devils are trembling right now when we all gather and say Jesus <laughs> picture that picture that they want to deceive 
They go on deceiving and being deceived. These people who buy into the lies. But that doesn't have to be you tonight. That doesn't have to be me tonight. We don't have to buy in to the lies any longer. The truth is setting us free and making us completely whole. Healed, set free, whole, and delivered. And yes, the name of Jesus will bring many other things, many other things, and that's why we need the power of the Holy Spirit. But I am all about love, I am all about unity. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus Christ. Apart from Jesus Christ, I can do nothing. It's Him. In Him, we move. In Him, we breathe. In Him, we have our being. Yes, Lord. God is faithful. And He promised. He is faithful who promised. So, we're not going to know what He's promised if we're not reading about his promises in the word. So we can stand together in agreement upon his holy word in what's already been promised. It's just we're taking possession of something that's already been promised to us. But if we don't know what's been promised, how do we take possession of it? How do we gain access to something without the authority to do so or knowing that we have the authority to do so. We have the keys to the kingdom. Whatever we bind in heaven shall be bound on earth. Whatever we loose in heaven shall be loosed on earth. And that's a type of authority we've been given is that we can actually speak in the realm of the spirit and make things happen and manifests on earth as in heaven. When God spoke, let there be light. In the beginning, if you read the, the book of Genesis, line upon line, it goes to say, God said, and God said, God said, let there be light. And things happened and the existence of everything we see just came to be just like that. And in the name of Jesus, we have authority. And so we must utilize and use the authority that he's given us as children of light, as children of God, as believers in the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And so it's just a renewing of our mentality, a renewing of our mind, that what's occurring on the outside of our lives, although it seems like we can't control it, we can have peace in knowing that God knows all things and that we're in the palm of his hand. And no one can touch God's anointed and just knowing that God has a plan in all things. We can have a peace on the inside by just surrendering it over to him and knowing it's already being worked out for your good. It's already being worked out for my good. Although I may not see it right here, although I may not see it right now, all things are working together for the good. For those who love God and live according to his purpose. Amen and amen. He's faithful. He is good. He is worthy. Yes, Lord. So anybody who doesn't know the Lord, doesn't know Jesus as their Lord, as their Savior, and would like to do so, and would like to partake, would like to join in this prayer, feel free, or just rededicate our walk with God, then if you feel led, feel free to pray along with me. God is for us. He's with us. So we just say tonight, Jesus, I don't know you, but I want to know you. I confess with my mouth right now, from my heart, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. 
I believe that you died, that you were crucified, that you were buried, and that you rose the third day by the power of resurrection. Right now, I make you my Lord Jesus. I make you my Savior, and I ask that you would soften my heart, open my heart, come into my heart, and strengthen me, and comfort me, and fill me, baptize me with the Holy Spirit, with power, and with fire now. I surrender it all. I surrender my entire life to you. I make you my Lord. I make you my Savior, Jesus. Give me the strength to follow you all the days of my life, even to eternity. Save my friends. Save my family. Use me completely for your glory as a testimony to the nations and just completely I surrender it all. Let the love of God be revealed to me. Put a fire in me that cannot be put out. All consuming fire take residence in this vessel right now. Love of God, be made manifest in my life. Open up dreams, open up visions, open up the reality of Jesus Christ in a powerful way. Strengthen my relationship with you, Jesus. Only you can do it, Lord. I can't do it in my own strength. Let it all be done by grace, through faith in you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is good. He is worthy. He will fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit. He is faithful who promised. His word does not return void. And when God says it, that settles it. Just like God said, let there be light. There is light. It just exists because God said it. And when God has declared something over your life, it shall be done. It shall be established. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let all be established. And it's just a matter of believing. Believing by the gift of faith that he is the author. He is the finisher of our faith. And we just put our faith completely in Jesus Christ because we can't do this in our own strength. We can't do this in our own power. It's impossible. He is the great I am in the word impossible. We need the great I am to take over, completely taking over and just fill us and fuel us and feed us spiritual nourishment to even move. We take a step of faith, a leap of faith, and we begin walking. We begin crawling at first <laughs> with the milk of the word. We begin to stand up. We begin to take it one step at a time. We begin to walk. We begin to eat by the reading of the Word of God for spiritual nourishment. We begin to stand and not faint. We begin to run with the meat, the deep things, the depth of the Word of God. And those who wait on the Lord shall not grow weary, shall stand and not faint. We shall mount up with wings as eagles. Yes. 
So God has good plans. We can rest in knowing that. It's all by grace, through faith, in what Jesus Christ has done for us at the cross. And we just come into agreement with something that's been previously finished. It is finished. Depression is finished. Addiction is finished. Fear is finished at the cross. It's been nailed to the cross so that you can be set free. It's been nailed to the cross so that I can be set free. But if I don't believe it, I'm not partaking of the promises that God has for me. You are not partaking of the promises that God has for you. It's all about believing. It's a faith walk. So God has amazing things. And I'm excited for this upcoming season of what is to come. So if you guys feel purposed in your heart, led in the way of seeking out God and, and being joined to, to a move of God, powered by the Holy Spirit, that's all about love, that's all about unity, that's all about the name of Jesus Christ in the body of Christ and in the community, then feel free to check out the links provided um, in this video. And if anybody feels led to donate towards that cause, um, feel free. Feel free. And uh, until the next time, also, one more thing. <laughs> it's the Long Island Awakening page. Worship United. It's going to be fire. It's going to be amazing. The power of God is going to fall. People are going to be healed. People are going to be touched by God. People are going to be set free. People are going to be delivered. People are going to be set free by the power of God. Miracles, signs, and wonders shall proceed shall break out and break forth so if anybody feels led to check out uh, the pages provided above feel free if anyone feels led to donate towards this cause feel free you guys know me you guys know this channel no pressure it's as the spirit leads I'm just here to promote a move of the Holy Spirit. I'm here to promote the name of Jesus Christ and to give him all of the glory. So until the next time, I will pray for you guys. Please pray for me and our families just continuing on in this walk, in the narrow way. Amen. <laughs> and great joy be unto you. Amen and amen and amen. Let it be so. God bless.